Mark Zuckerberg's AI strategy, it is all about openness, transparency, collaboration, democratization. This technology is so important and the opportunities are so great that we should open source and make it as widely available as we responsibly can so that way everyone can benefit. He wants to open up AI to everyone, but should we trust him? And just how open is his AI anyway? This week on Tech Check, we are breaking down the myth of open source. While ChatGPT is quickly becoming a household name, Meta's version of AI brings to mind a tall, woolly, long-necked animal. But among developers, those working in the AI trenches, Meta's open source model called Llama is the hottest thing around. Meta is turning into, uh, into the, the leading uh, open source AI uh, big, big technology company. Um, and it's really uh, paying dividends in, in the public image. Wall Street is also waking up to Meta's AI proposition. Its stock over the last year has well outperformed Google's and Microsoft's. But calling Meta's AI system open source is only part of the story. We're here to break down the promise and the myth. In its purest, most simplified definition, open source is where the source or the underlying code is freely available to access, copy, modify, redistribute. Closed software, on the flip side, means that the source code is only accessible to its creators and fully controlled by them. What data was used to train Sora? We used publicly available data and licensed data. So, videos on YouTube? I'm actually not sure about that. Okay. Videos from Facebook, Instagram? You know, if they were publicly available, um, available, yeah, publicly available to use, um, there might be the data, but um, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not confident about it. She can't or she won't tell us. And because the model is closed, there's no way of getting that information. So if the chatbot is biased, if it hallucinates, or if it spits out misinformation, developers cannot go back and find out how it happened. Another key component of building and evaluating an AI model are its weights, essentially how much value the model assigns to pieces of its training data. There's also all the training data itself, a huge amount of data that is supposed to be transparent and trackable in open source models, letting researchers and users understand how a model works. Unlike open source software, the weights and training make it so generative AI models require huge amounts of compute power to build, which in turn requires huge amounts of capital. It's why so far the largest players in the space have been confined to those with the most money, most of them only releasing closed models. When it comes to most of the progress made in AI today, it has come from those closed source models. This is companies like OpenAI with their GPT, Gemini from Google, Anthropic. But a select few are marketing themselves as open source. The biggest, Meta's Llama 2, Google's new Gemma, and the Mistral Large. Proponents of open source include some of tech's most prominent figures, like Meta's Mark Zuckerberg and Tesla's Elon Musk. Uh, the name uh, OpenAI refers to open source. Um, so, so the intent was, what's the op okay, so what was the opposite? What's the opposite of, um, of Google would, would be a, an open source nonprofit because Google is closed source for profit. Um, and that profit motivation can be potentially dangerous. Musk and advocates of that philosophy, they say that open source is crucial to preventing the concentration of power in the hands of the few and the richest, and that transparency is critical to making sure the systems are safer and better. When push comes to shove, let's say they do create some, some digital superintelligence almost godlike intelligence, well, who's in control? Those building closed source models, on the other hand, they say they offer better quality control and money-making opportunities. To state the obvious, there are near-term uh, commercial incentives against open source, but there is another longer-term argument against open sourcing as well. When the capability is on the lower end, I think open sourcing is a great thing. But at some point, the capability will become so vast that it will be obviously irresponsible to open source models. Now the two sides, they may sound like they are diametrically opposed, except that some of those open source models may not actually be as open as they say. The biggest open source model out there right now, it is Meta's Llama 2. Right now they have the leading open source AI model in the world, that's Llama 2. 
I think it's downloaded something like 30 million times in the last couple of months. The company says tens of thousands of startups they were built upon it, including buzzy ones like Snowflake, Scale AI, DoorDash. Meta benefits too. When a model is open source, any developer can go in and fine tune it, also adding those improvements to the model itself, essentially free labor for the benefit of all. Meta says that has improved Llama's performance by nearly 10%. But it's also good PR. Now Mark Zuckerberg can tell investors things like, Our long-standing strategy has been to build an open source general infrastructure while keeping our specific pro product implementations proprietary. The catch is Llama was only publicly released because of a leak. It was initially only available to researchers by invitation. Less than a week later, someone posted the full model online for anyone to download. And the dirty truth? Critics say that Llama's not actually open source. The open source initiative, founded in 1998 to support the open source ecosystem, writes that, unfortunately, the tech giant has created the misunderstanding that Llama 2 is open source. It is not. The biggest issue is who gets to use it. Open source systems should, in theory, be free for anyone to use. But Meta restricts its licensing, dictating that you can't use Llama to improve any other large language model and that you have to request a license if your company has more than 700 million monthly active users. Some analysts also predict the model won't even stay free for long. And I'd put this probably three years out where we'll, we'll likely start to hear more about this is the opportunity for them to start to charge for it. Munster believes that eventually Meta could build a cloud service that the model runs on and charge to use it, i.e. closing it to non-paying customers. Mark Zuckerberg is not doing this uh, for the good of humanity. Uh, he is advancing this because he sees the power of artificial intelligence and the opportunity to build a big business around it. Meta is not the only company known for being open source that doesn't seem fully committed to it. Mistral is the biggest open source AI company in the startup world. AI startup Mistral is raising nearly $500 million in a funding round that includes NVIDIA and Salesforce as investors. But their most recent and most powerful model, called the Mistral Large, that's closed. In the case of uh, Maestro, what they've announced is working with Microsoft, and that's actually a closed product. That's very different. They're maintaining their open uh, product. They're doing both of it. They're doing both, touting itself as an open generative AI company while at the same time closing off their most cutting edge technology. Researchers in the paper Open for Business, they say that most open source AI, it's just marketing. And they write that some companies are embracing open AI as a way to entrench their own dominance, letting them set standards of development while benefiting from the free labor of open source contributors. Some of the most successful open source models will eventually want to find ways to make money for it. Here's another example. Musk has not been shy about his belief in open source AI. Elon Musk posting on X the following, uh, that this week his AI startup XAI will open source Grok. Musk unveiled his AI platform Grok back in November of last year and said it can access X, formerly Twitter, in real time. He sued OpenAI, of course, now and Sam Altman, alleging they broke the company's funding agreement by seeking profit and criticize them for not being open. But a trove of emails that OpenAI published in defense seems to suggest that Musk is only an advocate in public. In private, he wrote that OpenAI was burning cash, that the funding model couldn't reach scale, and that a for-profit pivot might create a more sustainable revenue stream. When one OpenAI executive told Musk, as we get closer to building AI, it will make sense to start being less open. The open and open AI means that everyone should benefit from the fruits of AI after it's built, but it's totally okay to not share the science. Elon simply replied, yep. Even if the biggest tech companies aren't truly buying in, the community of developers and users that are passionate about the open source cause has been around long before them, and they will stay long after. There is, I think, will be a vibrant open source community. This is just a natural part of what happens when there's a paradigm shift. And I think it will be a smaller part relative to the paid for community. But if for those developers who want to uh, have that ability to customize and not pay as much, they're gonna have plenty of options in the decade to come. What is clear is that separating truly open source AI from just marketing, that will have a huge commercial impact, shape policy, and determine whether the revolutionary tech will stay in the hands of the few or the many.